Pricing strategies Pricing strategies allow businesses to decide which prices they should establish in a given market and understand which prices make the business the most profitable. In order to understand which is the best pricing strategy, firms must look at market positions relative competitors, the customers as well as other market characteristics, like for example government legislation and appealing locales. Differences across customer segments, competitors, and product mix as well as product and cost characteristics are the two dimensions used when evaluating pricing strategies. There are three different pricing strategies with their respective subtypes. There is differential pricing following strategies of second market discounting, periodic discounting, and random discounting. Then there is competitive pricing following the strategies of penetration pricing, experience curve pricing, price signaling, and geographic pricing. And last, but not least, there is product line pricing following the strategies of price bundling, premium pricing, image pricing and complementary pricing. Ok so let's start. Differential pricing These strategies occur because a company faces distinct customer segments with specific characteristics when applying a strategy. A type of differential pricing strategy is second market discounting. As the name of the strategy implies, second market discounting distinguishes between two markets, a pioneer and a second market. The pioneer market is the original market in which the firm has already distributed its product. The latter provides another opportunity for the firm to market the exact same product under different conditions. The two markets are separable according to three features. First, the original market is a market of high-quality, branded products, whereas the second market produces unbranded, rather generic offerings. Second, differences in customers' gender, age, or profession, divide the two markets. Lastly, geographical distance makes it easy to distance the two market offerings. To not induce huge losses from the discounting scheme, Firms that apply such a strategy often sell yet unsold products on the second market. Selling at lower unprofitable prices is still better than disposing of the unsold product altogether. Ok, so let us look at an example. The pharmaceutical companies of Western countries, selling expensive AIDS drugs to poor countries, such as Africa, at vastly reduced prices. This way, the established pharmaceutical companies avoid having imitators create copies of the drugs, also referred to as generics, which they sell below market prices to poor countries. As we can see, Europe or the US constitutes the first market, whereas Africa is the second market. A boundary separates the markets according to geographic distance and customer demographics. Another type of differential pricing strategy is periodic discounting. Periodic discounting, also called price skimming, implies that a firm initially sets a high price to then discount during the remaining offering period. Customers with high reservation prices do not want to wait and buy the product only in the beginning of the period, thus at a higher price. In contrast, Customers with low reservation prices wait until the product is discounted. The discounting scheme is open to anybody, and not necessarily unknown to customers, as the second customer segment bids on the product price to fall in order to buy it at a later point in time. The first segment provides a profit incentive for the firm to introduce the product in the first place. The second customer segment helps the firm to sell yet unsold products. A proper example to mention here is the seasonal discounting scheme adopted by fashion retailers, namely Zara. The fast fashion company publishes its sale periods online. Hence, the discounting strategy is known to anybody and at low search cost. When seasons change, Zara gradually discounts its offered products. 
Nonetheless, most of the customers are impatient and value the clothes enough to buy at higher prices in the beginnings of the seasons. The last type of differential strategy is random discounts. Firms use random discounts if they face customers with different search costs. First, the firm establishes a relatively high price for a product. Then it discounts the product randomly during the offering period. Customers with high search costs cannot afford to look for the best product alternative. They buy a desired product right away without comparing prices or quality. Hence, they might get lucky after all and purchase a just discounted product. But they can also be unlucky and buy a product at regular prices. Customers with low search cost are informed about the discounting scheme and wait for the price to drop to then purchase a specific product. Supermarket chains, such as Portugal's Continent or Pingo Dos, often opt for random discounts. They put various products randomly on sale. The segment with low search cost is informed about discount periods. Such customers read supermarket advertisements in magazines and brochures. On the contrary, uninformed customers either do not receive the brochures, often seen as mere advertisements, or throw them straight into the bin. Thus, this segment is more likely to purchase the product at normal price levels. Let's move on to competitive pricing strategies and their subtypes. Firms that implement competitive pricing strategies set prices by taking competitors' offered prices into account. The aim is to not provide rivals with profit prospects, which induces them to enter a market. This pricing strategy is adopted more regularly by firms that sell similar products, and less frequently by companies that sell services, as service replication is rather complicated. Another important condition to apply competitive pricing is that the price for a respective product or service has reached a level of equilibrium. This tends to occur when the product has longer been on the market and multiple competitors already produce similar offerings. The first type of competitive pricing strategies is penetration pricing. Penetration pricing lowers prices with two objectives in mind, to attract customers and to keep rivals from entering the market. It assumes that customers are more willing to switch to a new product if it is lower priced. Thus, a firm initially sets low prices to rapidly raise awareness, luring customers away from competitors. Normally, this strategy has marketing purposes. One of its intentions is to increase the company's market share. Market share is crucial to be able to exploit economies of scale or inexperience. Economies of scale refer to declining unit cost with increasing output. As for experience effects, declining unit costs stem from more efficient and cost-effective performances on repetitive tasks. Let's look at an example of penetration pricing. Costco and Kroger, two major grocery store chains, both use penetration pricing for organic foods. On the one hand, the margin on groceries is very small. On the other hand, the margin on organic groceries tends to be higher. Also, given increasing societal health consciousness, the demand for organic foods has been significantly growing, while the demand for conventional groceries has been decreasing. Most of the grocery stores are trying to sell more organic options to raise profit margins. However, Costco and Kroger apply a different approach. Instead of taking advantage of high profit margins, they sell organic food at low margins. This keeps customers away from competitors, hereby gaining a larger share of the market. Experience Curve Pricing Penetration pricing and experience pricing are very similar. However, experience curve pricing is more aggressive. A firm decreases the price of a product or a service below the current market price to a level competitors can hardly cope with. 
to be able to set such low prices. Such firms often have low production cost thanks to experience effects. Employees or machines quickly learn to work in a more cost-effective and time-efficient manner. Experience curve pricing puts pressure on competitors to leave the market. As a result, the company gains new customers from leaving competitors, increasing its market share. Rising market share then enables the company to exploit economies of scale. When reducing prices first, the firm most probably suffers a period of losses. But by eliminating competition in the long run, the company turns much more profitable than in the beginning. To name an example of this theory, IKEA, the Swedish furniture manufacturing company, established decreasing prices for its lac table. For instance, in Germany, lac prices were 9.99 euros in 2007, 7.99 euros in 2009, and 4.99 euros in 2011. The opportunity to decrease the selling price of its products is rooted in IKEA's history of experience in the furniture industry. The shrinking prices eliminate some of IKEA's major competitors in the market. Since new manufacturers do not have comparable resources needed to reduce production costs, the furniture supplier has a competitive advantage in experience effects. Consequently, IKEA profits from economies of scale thanks to its size and global footprint. Moving on to price signaling. When you are shopping, what are the two things that you look for to make the purchase decision? In most cases it's price and quality and you compare competitors' offerings. In a price signaling situation, prices are easy to find and compare. However, the quality is not. There is a high probability to be mistaken in the quality assessment. Imagine that you are going to buy a bottle of olive oil as a Christmas present for your mother. You go to the supermarket to see two different olive oil groups. The standard group for cooking that costs around 3.19 euros, and the premium group that ranges around 6.99 euros. You start to be a little bit nervous, because the premium product is double the price of the standard one and you do not know anything about olive oil. Finally, you choose to buy the premium selection, since high prices most often signal high quality. You are undecided between the product offerings Azai Virgin Extra, Salicai Espro, and Azai de Culinaria Quinta das Amelias. After some time, you buy the second offering because of the impressive bottle design. When your mother opens your present she immediately says, this one is similar to the standard olive oil that I use for frying potatoes. You are really upset because you paid a premium price for a lower quality product. You were a victim of a price signaling strategy, because you were not capable to grasp the real quality of the product that you bought. Lastly, let's look at geographic pricing. When people were isolated in small villages in the past, they only had one unique price for bread in each village. Some villages did not have fertile fields, so bread was scarce and more expensive. Within other villages, there was a huge bread supply, driving down prices. With the evolution of transportation means, these small isolated villages started to import and export products like bread. The transportation itself held some cost that increased the selling price. There are three ways to spread transportation costs across the original and the destination market. These are, free on board, uniform delivery strategy and freight absorption costs. Let's analyze these three strategies with an example. Imagine two Portuguese medieval villages, Almeida and Belmonte, which are 50 kilometers apart. Almeida is a big bread producer and its bread market price is 1 euro. Belmonte, having difficulties to cultivate wheat, has a higher bread price. 
Senior Z, Almeida's Baker, chooses one of the following strategies to strategically distribute transportation costs of 1 euro. On the following day, he goes to Belmonte and sees that the bread price from the local baker is really high, 2.5 euros. He then decides that he will charge all the transport cost on Belmonte citizens, following the free on board strategy. In the end, he comes up with a price list. One bread in Almeida for 1 euro and one bread exported to Belmonte for 2 euros incurring of the cost of the bread plus the transportation cost. On a different day, he goes to Belmonte and sees that the local bread price is 1.6 euro. He concludes that he will divide the transport cost in half, charging both villages. This way, he maintains competitiveness within both markets. Such a scheme is called Uniform Deliver Strategy. He comes up with a different price list. One bread in Almeida and in Belmonte is 1.5 euro. One year later, Belmonte Baker improves production efficiency and reduces the price to 1.1 euro. To stay competitive, Senior Z decides that he will charge all transportation costs on Almeida citizens and export to Belmonte at a lower price, following a freight absorption cost strategy. He produces yet another price list. One bread in Almeida costs 2 euros and one bread in Belmonte costs 1 euro. Product Line Pricing Strategies A product line is a group of related products sold under a single brand. Product Line Pricing Strategies balance prices among members of product lines. Now let's look at the first product line strategy, Price Bundling. In this strategy, companies sell a set of goods or services at a lower price than if sold separately. This way, each customer segment would buy the bundle as their reservation prices for it exceed the actual price. Three conditions have to be met in order to apply this strategy. First, customers usually consume the bundle products jointly or independently. If one of the bundle products were sufficient to satisfy a need, customers would not be willing to buy the package. Second, Customers are aware of the product and price variety on the market and realize that the bundle is the best deal. Lastly, differential pricing strategies are not applicable as bundle products are perishable. Price bundling is either mixed or pure. Pure bundling offers only the product package. In mixed bundling, customers have the choice to either buy the products separately or included in a package. Mixed bundling has the advantage that customers realize that they save money when buying the package instead of the individual parts. This strategy is most often applied in the cosmetics industry as cosmetic products, such as perfume, body lotion, shower gel are most often consumed together. For instance, the Gucci Guilty Eau de Toilette perfume costs around 54.95 euros in German perfumery chains, such as Douglas. In the bundle, Douglas sells the Gucci Guilty Perfume in combination with the Gucci Guilty Body Lotion, 50 ml, also at 54.95 euros. As we can see, customers save money, buying the bundle and not its individual parts. Now let's look at premium pricing. A premium pricing strategy involves two products of different quality and price levels. The high quality product is sufficiently different from the basic product. Yet, they serve the same purpose. The firm faces two types of customers who either prefer lower prices for the basic product or higher quality regardless of the extra price. The firm produces first the total amount of both types of products. Thereby it saves money by benefiting from economies of scale. To satisfy high quality demand, it spends some extra money on developing the premium products or services. The production of Fiat 500 is an example of the premium pricing strategy. 
the basic Fiat model displays less horsepower than the Fiat 500 Abarth. The Fiat 500 Abarth was specially designed to address customers, looking for a superior driving experience. Added features within and outside the car as well as engine upgrades create a sportier version of the car. However, the improved driving performance comes at a cost. A Fiat Abarth costs around $22,575 in the US, whereas a basic Fiat 500 ranges around $17,900 in the US in 2016. Image Pricing Image pricing is used to sell an identical version of a basic product under a different name and at a significantly higher price. Firms pretend that the higher price signals higher quality, when in fact, it is an inflated price. Customers who seek high quality and are not willing to search around might fall into the trap of buying the overpriced product. This strategy is different from price signaling in that both higher and lower priced products belong to the firm's same product generation, but a different brand. It is different from premium pricing as firms only make up the high quality of the product, but in reality, the higher priced and the basic products are of identical quality. Chiquita Brands International, Inc., an American fruits producer, is one of the biggest banana suppliers in the world. The global company operates in more than 70 countries. The company's most prominent banana brand is Chiquita. However, it sells bananas also under names like Chiquita Jr., Consul, Amigo, Fruitpack, Chico, or Bananos. The latter brands are more unknown for European customers, selling at lower prices although quality is somewhat identical. Lastly, there is complementary strategy. Complementary pricing comes in three forms, depending on whether products, services, or retailing is concerned, namely captive pricing, two-part pricing, and loss leadership. Captive pricing is used for products consumed together. The name of the strategy implies the customers who bought the initial product are captivated by the firm. They need to buy further products or services offered by that same firm to better use and operate the initial product. Hence, the strategy fosters customer loyalty. An example for such a strategy is the printer business. Companies that offer printers always sell ink to operate the printer. Customers are usually stuck with that one firm they bought the printer from for many years as they need to repeatedly buy the firm-specific ink for years to come. The two-part pricing strategy is similar to captive pricing regarding the general pricing procedure. The only difference being that two-pricing strategy relates to services instead of products. Software companies that provide their software service over the internet tend to adopt a two-part pricing strategy, which is also referred to as freemium model. The freemium model is a combination of free software download and premium after-sales services. This model aims at getting customers to seek a premium version of the software or service provided by company software experts. For instance, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux is an enterprise software system issued to customers for free. Linux, the open-source software company, provides additional services around the initial software downloads so that customers use the software in more depth with specialized knowledge. However, this extra service comes at a cost. Last but not least, Loss leadership is used to describe complementary pricing in the retailing industry. Popular brands are discounted radically to attract customers. This increases store traffic. Most attracted customers buy more than just the discounted product, extending their shopping journey. For instance, retailers such as supermarket chains, often put the hazelnut cocoa cream Nutella by Ferrero on sale in order to lure customers into its stores. Nutella buyers are mostly mothers with children who tend to shop around more. 
they will most surely not only buy Nutella but also additional foods or beverages for their families. The lost profit for Nutella products is made up by increasing total sales within the supermarket. So this was our project, we hope you liked it and, above all, we hope you understood everything. It was a pleasure. Thank you, and goodbye.